Okay, so here we are live from my bedroom on the road. But I'm actually doing this little introduction right here from my bedroom live as I'm not dead. So here we are doing live things from my bedroom and we're keeping it above the waist and we're keeping it in the head because that's where we are today talking uh, about charities, giving of oneself, giving more of oneself and, and paying it forward. Things that we do in our lives and then we do for people around us. Uh, and we always just tell those people, pay it forward. It's not my idea. I didn't come up with this pay it forward idea. But instead of having people pay me back in things that I don't need, have them help someone in front of them. And moving it forward. I love it. Paying it forward. And and if you can have a career in paying it forward, some people think they can. Um, here in the entertainment world, standing on stage, making others laugh, giving the gift of joy. At least that's what I was talking to Dave Cornell about. He's uh, an entertainer, stand-up comic, uh, actually. He would say stand-up comic first. He has a lot. He's an illustrator. He has other things that he's doing, which we will talk to him live on location at the Opera House, and he's doing a little diligent thing in January 31st with some charity for some good people, and he'll talk about that right off the head. So at the beginning, he'll explain all that. I'd like to thank Tires Tires for making this possible and letting me reach out to you and those who are in for some infuntainment. So first we start off with a little theme song. So listen to this. Every highway starts to look the same. Mile markers are my minutes in my day. Through my mirrors I can see my home behind me. I sign my soul on the dotted line. Yes, I sign my soul. Yes, I sign my soul on the dotted line. Okay. Okay, like promised, uh, live uh, from my bedroom on the road. And today, uh, I'm in a fantastic space. I, the space, I feel, I feel like I'm at an award show. I'm looking out. Uh, it, I could technically be accepting or giving an award right now at the Opera House in Toronto. Uh, if you have an opportunity to see any anything going on in Toronto that's happening at the Opera House, I would have uh, that ticket bought. This is, this is a fun space. I love terracotta, which is my first string out. And I bet no one knows that that's terracotta because the lights are probably always uh, tinned down. And I'm with, <laughs> and I'm with a, uh, an on-the-road performer, uh, hence the on-the-road. And he, he's having himself, which I'll have him give all the deets and the details of a... Uh, of a charity event that's happening in this location, and he's an on-the-road performer. Um, I know him as as a host. I also know him as a stand-up philosopher and an entertainer. I also know him as a fantastic close-up magician. Um, and these are the things I hold in high regard, everything I've mentioned just there. And I'd like to know more about all of those and traveling with all of those. And again, like my kids are in the room, this is for them. These are for, this is hopefully going to be a clean, uh, a clean interview. Uh, he normally works clean, and we are in the afternoon right now, so he shouldn't feel this is the late show. Normally, when it gets dark outside, and it's it is it is uh, it is winter in Canada, so it's dark outside. <laughs> so we do have that going for us. So we do feel like it could be the late show. But you have to be told it is the early show, and there are kids in the room, so they was talking that. So I have Dave Cornell with me. Hello. And we are sitting on a stage. We are. We're on the stage. I'm going to be performing on. We are literally rising stars right now, sitting on risers, and we're standing on a stage that can that could perpetuate us into a into a whole new uh, era of what is that, David? I'm, I'm looking at the art on the walls, but I didn't see it until, until just now. Two yeah. huge pieces of art on both sides. And this is going to be where you're having a charity event. Uh, yep. It's happening January 31st? January 31st. Two shows, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. And um, they're both going to be here. We'll have 300 people in for each show. And I'm sitting here. It's funny. I'm just, as you're talking, just picturing what this place is going to feel like when it's full. It's a really interesting room. There's a great energy here. Uh, I like the balcony. I've actually never performed. That is a balcony because yeah. from here it looks like a bar. Like first, the first first off, it feels like you're gonna get served drinks. But right there, oh, no, yeah, there's there a is tables. a bar back up there. There's yeah, a bar up that's there. what I saw first. Yep. And then, oh, that's fantastic. It's a two tiered balcony, um, so there'll be about 50, 75 people up there, and the rest down here, straight on. And um, what I like is I realized uh, I don't not really have to look up to the balcony. It's not a high balcony, even though the ceiling's really high. So it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a neat dynamic. And right. Steve Cox is opening for me, so I like him. He's a great guy. Stand-up comedian. 
phenomenal. He's uh, he, he's an ideal ideal host because he gets a room, you know. Right. And he'll tie the room together. He'll pull this in because we've got sponsors. Uh, the idea is that the tickets are seventy five dollars, and we're selling them to sponsors to give to employees or customers. And you know, then they get to write it off as a business. I'm just saying that because that's important. No, it, um, it, it is important when it comes it to giving charity to know that you're giving, but you're getting in the same. Well, this feeling. is the thing. It's like a pay it forward scenario. This is okay. Thank you. This is why I like this. Okay, I've done charity events before where the tickets aren't that expensive. You don't end up giving much money to the charity. You kind of feel like a fraud, like you're doing it for you. Right. No. Right. But right. the reason was always but because, right. because we don't have a million dollars in the bank. We Thank still you. need the work. We still have to yep. get paid. And anytime I ever did a charity event, it was always whatever they were going to. I didn't ask whatever was whatever was offered because it's yep. a charity. Yep. And I'd say I'll take half of it in cash and half of it you can give me in, in a charity charitable receipt. But I couldn't work for a hundred percent charitable receipt. I, the gas they get me there. Uh, Thank you. And the fact that this is still my time in my life. Yeah. No, and right. in this case, it's not just that, but I'm actually involved in the producing, the selling, the getting all of the incentives and the, the spot, charity. Is, is there a reason for this particular charity, or did you so yeah, into this? It's funny. They found me originally, right? Um, and then I fell in love with them. So can I talk yeah. about them briefly? You can, you can, you're allowed to talk about the charity. Is, and this is, uh, but they didn't send you on the road. They're a Toronto-based. Uh, they are right here in Toronto. Okay, keep going. Um, okay, they do they do something incredible. I want to say this first, though. I mentioned the $75 tickets. Right. 51 meals per ticket at a dollar a meal, and that is stunning, and that's part of why I like this charity. Okay. Uh, they're called Food for Friends. The grassroots nonprofit. So we shouldn't use the word charity. They're a nonprofit. Okay. So it is giving in charity, but it's a nonprofit group. When they do the things they do, nobody gets paid. Right. It's so volunteer, volunteer based. It's right. crazy. Um, they've been using a lot of their own money, and you know it's really hard to raise money for things like this. So uh, when we sell the tickets that we do, and I'm not making this up. It sounds insane, but thirty thousand nine hundred and seventy three. Meals will be provided. All right. So, okay, you've got the meals. That's a good there, number, though. It is a phenomenal. There are 5,000 homeless people in the city, men, women, and children. Right. There are places they can go to eat. Right. So this is what Food for Friends does, and this is why I love them. Every Tuesday, they go to Covenant House. Right. They serve 300 comfort meals. That's my term, comfort meals. Right. Uh, KFC, Pizza Hut, um, Subway, kids. I I've read comments they wrote for Rob Flater, the guy who started this charity. One of them said, and it blew my mind, and this was legitimate. This wasn't a tongue-in-cheek. The kid wrote, you have no idea how much this makes my year. Right. My daughter and I, every second Friday, do pizza night, and I don't give it a second thought. Okay. These kids don't get that. This isn't something you just, oh, let's have pizza tonight. This is, I get KFC. Right, no, right. Now, 300 kids go to Covenant House. And Covenant House is there for them to talk to. Kids that would never get there. And they've got support staff right there. That's great. So this is your motivator. This is your motivator to do what, yep. you, what you want to do anyways. Yep. And now you get to sow yourself to something, making a nice marriage, giving you an opportunity to speak about something you love, something you're now motivating you. This is a, this is a win, 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 win. It's, oh, it gets better. I mean, the whole thing is win, win. They go to a place called Gateway Shelter every Friday night. And right. they do a pizza movie night right. for the men that live at Gateway. Right. They still serve about 45,000 meals above and beyond those. Right. By getting donations, whatever money's left over, making sure it gets to whatever shelter needs it. And right. then every second month, they do a barbecue in the park in Hamilton and in Toronto where they just feed people. And I watched. I went to one. And I by the way, the he said Toronto, magic. by the way, folks. He didn't say Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. So he's visiting. Somebody said the other day I sound like an American, and I'm no, like, no. No, CNN. No. no, he means Atlanta. He means that you can cross the border and people don't know you're from Canada. That was actually a. Uh, he was actually complimenting, even though his Canadians were like nationally saying, "Yes, hey, get out of Uta here, you, eh?" <laughs> Which, I sound like an American. I'll go with no, that. No, you should take that as a, as an actual compliment. What they're saying is that you'll travel well. I think yeah, I sound like. Um, he says what a Jew says speak. to another Jew. You know? It's like <laughs> people people aren't you gonna sound know. Like you're from Brooklyn. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of all they're saying is you don't sound yes. Italian, which is weird because that that's funny. just. I, I love that you're so passionate about this project. Um, when people do yeah, give me feedbacks about my chats that I have with now that's with. I'm, you're, I'm calling you a comedian, and normally that's an insult to me. If I actually call somebody a comedian, enough, yeah. I would say, what are you, a comedian? What are you, some sort of comedian? Yeah. Do you have a talent? Like, that's kind of where I would go with this. But what I decided with this on the road, it's not just comedians, but I wanted to talk to people who I've accompanied yep. myself with over my whole life that, uh, that are peers to me. And, and appeared to me that they would help uh, kind of tell the story of the performer, the stand up, and the traveling. Because you, I, I don't know you to be a world traveler, but I do know you to travel this province a lot. Like you're yeah, I've done all of Canada. 
You've done um, all of Canada. Yeah, I lived now, in you say, LA now, when you say for all of Canada, now yeah, I'm going to push here. So I'm talking about the territories because have you ever been that way? Because I, I asked Simon and he's like, Simon Cotter, and he's like, no, there's nobody there. And it's like, so if there was somebody there, you go, I'm not going to entertain myself. I did none of it. <laughs> I've oh, done White Horse. Take that, Simon Cotter. I, I said been Cotter. In Yukon. Oh, my Lord. Oh, Rack off. I just said <laughs> Cotter. And now I feel like I want to have a Joe Louis. Oh, that's too funny. I just want a Joe Louis now. Everybody wants a Joe Louis. It's like a big Oreo cookie. You just gotta pop that puppy apart and just eat the cream filling out. No, no, no you know it's it, no. Joe That's Louis not. are one of the things that I bite whole. There are things that I eat bit by bit. If I have one of those peak cream things with the stuff in the middle, I will eat the cookie around the, the strawberry hole. center but the hole, off yeah. the top. Right, right. I will eat the cookie around the cream, right. just the little edges, and yeah. then I'll eat it in small bites so I can get a little bit of the strawberry yeah. with every yeah. bite in the cream. But Joe Louis, yeah. hump. That's how you eat a Joe Louis. See, see your OCD on on the peak frame. And I am all in on the Joe Louis. And, and your Hulk. Yeah, I am. Your Hulk. You don't want to see me eating a Joe Louis. Wow. <laughs> so I, I, I think I might do both. I do like pulling it apart because if you do, now that I can talk here freely, with the uh, the strawberry filling, if you take it and you twist it and you do pull, you get a crazy cool funnel action, which is so yes. fun to watch. And then you pop it in your mouth, and then you put your tongue in, you spin it I've around. Seen it. I've, I've seen, seen it, it, but it's just before. not how it works. Yeah, Pete no, Crane is not even sponsoring this program. But no, getting, nobody is. Neither no, is no, Louis. Well, no, oh, not are. nobody, but none of the anyone no, we're talking about yet. Well, that's true. That's true. But if you need snow tires, I can. I know a guy. That's a good plug. That's all it is. That's all it is. That's all. That's actually all it is. If you and it's on the site. If you need, if you need tires, or if you're looking for something in Toronto, I actually do. Strangely enough, need desperately tires. Well, then I got a guy, and well, I'll set you up after that's this. An week. interesting sentence. Yeah. The way I said that, need desperately tires. <laughs> yes. That's because I'm on a stage and I feel very uh, Shakespearean, even though that wasn't iambic to panta to pecabita, whatever that's called. Right. You the three. Know, like, the one two three. One two yeah. three. One two three. I uh, yeah, but part, pententum. By yeah. yes, ladies and gentlemen, I went to school. Um, so yeah. I want to get back to this, though, because I'd love to wrap this up before we have a real conversation. About charity. Yeah. A, oh, the win, okay. win, win here. Okay. Oh, um, win, win. I, I did, you were talking about close-up. Yes, I was. I went to a barbecue to do some close-up for them. And um, the response from the guys there getting the meals was awesome. Uh, but you know what from I saw? From the guys that getting the meals. You mean uh, the not volunteers, but people, people who, from the who street. need. The people who this need, was have people need. on the street coming to get a burger, a hot dog, a pop. They get together. But they were giving them toques. They were giving them uh, socks. They were giving, like, it was incredible. Like, it, it's just was this during it's was, was was it this was cold. during it was it was December during 13th it was, it was cold the, wow yeah so, oh but, i but couldn't do much stand I, I tried to do some close up i got as far as i could and then right. the fingers just went are you kidding but this was for the, the the season which i liked for christians the season of giving this is the season of yeah but they do this every second month so okay. every second month in every the park. second month it's it's christmas yeah and um, they do hamilton as well but right now we're focusing on toronto but here's the thing Go. so when 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 you win, buy win. a ticket mm -hmm. For 75 bucks. A, you feed, you fed 51 meals. Right. Boom. That is better than you're going to get almost anywhere. Yeah, you Secondly, should feel good about that. So you buy a ticket, you've just fed people. That you're like, I should, go to a, I should go to a soup kitchen, and I should do that. I think about that all the time. You buy one of these tickets, you basically went to a soup kitchen, and you fed 51 yeah. bases. Yeah, thank there you. you. Oh, that's brilliant. There you go. Now, secondly, you've got these tickets. Okay. You give them to your employees. You give them to your favorite customers. It says $75. You look good. It yeah. says where it's going to. You look great. You look great. They, and here's the part we were talking about earlier, which is I'm really reticent about talking when, about when, it, when, but when. I'm going to open up on this today. So Sweet. I'm going to tell you about my philosophy of comedy now, why it's changed. And now this breaks us out from charity to something uh, Exactly. This actually is a great segue. I, 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 I love segues. That. Um, that person who gets that ticket shows up here, and they laugh. Right. They laugh. Right. That is the single most healing thing a human being can do. And I've done research on this. There's actually legitimate science on this. Yes. And a lot of it... They're looking at miraculous things, which we in the past might have gone, what a miracle. Right. And science is starting to go, no, this is more common than you think. People who have cancer and go home and tell their families, we will only watch funny things. We will have no stress. I am not leaving this world this way. And then it's gone. Like right. This isn't something that um, I I is as esoteric or miraculous or spiritual as you might think. When people laugh, it helps their interpersonal relationships. It boosts their immune system. It helps them fight colds, helps their memory. It helps them so much. And you don't need to, you do need to laugh every day, but this is what we're doing. So you're giving people health. You're giving them something that they get to look at you and go, oh, you're generous. You're feeding people. Win, win, win. 
That's great, and that gives it the philosophy of comedy of, of giving back to others. And and I yeah. and I've I've walked that path, by the way. Um, if you don't know, I'm I'm going to be doing in 2028 and going back on the road and doing the uh, Die Laughing tour. I'll be doing. You have to be 80 years old to get into the room, but I promise someone dies every show. Okay, that's funny. Yeah, I'm hoping. You know, I do. Uh, I do my comedy magic. Um, and by the way, this is a shine a sign of respect. I constantly keep the stand up comedy separate from the magic. Um, the, I'll tell you, I love the magic, but comedy is my real personal expression. The magic is my joy of performing. And there was a long period of time when I only ever did it with kids because I love doing it with kids. You're talking, about, you're talking about the magic, right? Hmm? You're talking about magic. I'm talking about magic. Okay. Yeah. I, I got lost. Yeah. Okay. So the magic. The magic. The actual physical magic with the kids close up magic. That was oh, ever, no, close up I would do for corporate parties. Wait, did you ever adults. did you ever go to did you ever, did you ever any of those big uh, things like something you'd put on stage here like a big uh, no. what, what do you call it? Big illusion? No. Yeah, you get not I one. did one <laughs> at Mine's uh, mine's my career. <laughs> mine's my ego. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, no, your ego is real. No, Super is real, real. Too, though that is feed it. Super eight. Yeah. <laughs> so right. uh, but I started doing now it's funny because you mentioned close up. I would do close up mm. in a corporate setting or what have you. And that was uh, adults. And on a stand-up night when only three people showed up, we, we, you, you climb down off the stage, give a couple of those, like, huh? No, that never happened. You never did them? No, and, see, I, I and that never will. And I, well, see, for me, that's where we're the opposite. But I'll tell you why. Okay. If there are three people in the audience, right. they came and to I've see, done this. They came to see stand-up. It's not just that. Okay. I still have something to give them with stand-up. See, magic is a great way to perform. And when I do say a corporate thing where I'm reaching them one at a time, it's mm. really the stand-up anyways the expression of me and wanting them to laugh which comes through right so like i approach a table and i'll say hey how you doing would you like to see some magic whoa, whoa, whoa hold on before you answer i got a slogan i worked hard on this slogan i don't want you to say yes until i give you this slogan here's my slogan would you like to see some magic it's free that's a great slogan right see my old slogan wasn't working my old slogan was wow you guys are ugly want to see some tricks that wasn't working and okay, it's not the funniest joke in the world, but it sets up the tone I'm of what what's wrong I, with exactly. You. Okay, so it's the theater. It's I should have made a laugh. The tone of the magic. I want to be great. The interpersonal play of laughter is what counts. Okay. So now I brought it to seniors, and I'm literally I'm doing these seniors' homes, and they're, they're not the biggest paying things in the world. Right. No, they're no, they're not. They're but, not. But, but but it's like doing a kids' party. Their faces light up. And I'm changing people. No, hundred percent. And and their day is you don't. I worked at casino, and that's actually when you saw people actually losing their families and fortune coming in. And I wasn't Ouch. doing I wasn't doing comedy per se, but I was allowed to be myself on stage and and, and kind of stray from script. Yeah. And I always made my bandmates kind of laugh out, out laugh out loud because going off script is the easiest thing to do in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's funny. Yeah. Well, so when you find yourself uh, seeing people who are really hit ground, uh, hit that bottom floor. So my travel experience is you really want to just bring them back up. Yeah. That's all you want to do is bring them back up. And you can use yourself as an example. And then after you make fun of yourself, you can then spin it onto them so they can then, if you can laugh at yourself while you're feeling down or you've now been brought back up. Yep. Again, uh, if you ever, uh, just a side note, if you ever see anyone really depressed and you think they might kill themselves, get them angry. Angry people don't kill themselves. And if you can't get them angry, then put your arm over their shoulder and get them a coffee because now you know they're getting closer to picking up a knife. If you say something to them and they normally would get, yeah, you're right, I should kill myself, you're right. Hold on, <laughs> you're so depressed that you're not even fighting back. I'm just throwing it out there because- No, you, that's, a, that's actually yeah. a very interesting yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the red in card. In moments in my life when yeah. I get lost, I will go to anger. And my first thing that I'll do is I'll put that anger, I'll project it onto the things, the people, the emotions, the events, circumstances that I think are making me hurt. Okay. And then I'll start to turn that anger towards myself. I'm still judging. No, but you're still Hold angry. On, but you so, hear but you're still though. angry, though. But it is a process where then I realize how stupid the anger is, and I go back to love. No, that's good. No, no, no. See, that's a good full circle. Now, as long as the anger, see, I'm just trying to get you out of depression. Yeah. That's my. That's the reason I gave you a little. But no, no that's but, good. But you've got a really good point. The I'm glad you can go from anger to love. Fighting back against. Yes. It's just that I am. Yeah, it's a fight. Unbelievably lucky that I can always stop it. I sometimes need to get to the anger at myself, right. ironic, I, I, ironically, ultimately, right. um, at myself, right. not the circumstances, before I can go, oh, wait a minute, you don't need to be angry at yourself. Let right. it go. Right. And then I go back to that motivation from love. Now, the motivation from love can sometimes end up being the reason I'm hurt, right. 
and that's when I'm losing track of it. That's when, again, I'm thinking it's other people in circumstances that are making me feel the way I do. No, I choose my own feelings. No, that's true. And when I choose my feelings based on loving not just my daughter, not just the people in my life that are close, but just simply loving I sounded like an evangelist there. Yeah. Loving. Yeah. Uh, just simply well, it's loving. because of where we are. I mean, it's true. I know. You could do a, a revival here. You really yeah. could. This is a fantastic space. So I, I love this I, space. I'm, I'm happy that you're being so open because you you, that's a nice. You, yes, you just now mentioned that you had a daughter, which I want to talk about. Yes. I want to bring up my children as well. I have something to say. And uh, also, we're, we are on the road. Uh, that's what we are. Live from my bedroom on the road. So you said you, you were everywhere in Canada, and yep. I, even, I even called you out tonight. None of it. it was none of it, dude. None, none of it. That's right. Galloway. Called you out, and, yeah. uh, and then I made a mistake. And then we, uh, <laughs> we go forward. So do you have any road stories? Because that's kind of another beat of this mm. of this thing. Could be if you have a road story of something that you could tell as a, as, as a monologue. Of something, or, or what's the most interesting or the most crazy thing that's ever happened that you're like, yeah, you won't believe the road. Because the road is its own thing. It is. But you know what? I'm almost boring this way. Um, I don't get heckled. Almost never. Right. I don't know why. I do. You're telling a story. You're always telling a story. You're never throwing it out there for anyone to. I've just told you a story. That's a really good. And this point. is how it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I Some have people, done two people. You don't do set up punch normally. Da 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 da. And yet I do and set up and punch, but it's no. All you're telling a story. Into a story, story right? I love set up. Yeah, punch. You're telling a story. At no time do you say Rrr, or yeah. honk honk. Yeah. At that's no true. time do you honk honk. If you honk honk, you're setting yourself up for. Hey, why are you honk honking? Versus, and then the guy goes, honk, honk, because that's what guys do. Yeah. They honk, honk. And then you explain. And if you don't get the laugh you want, we call it a tag, and you explain in story form. Which is funny, because I will write a setup punch, but I won't put it into the act until I feel it has a place, or that's when I'll do open mic night kind of things. I'll right. put it in the act to see where I can bring it. And that's what the open mic is. And when you're on the yeah. road, do you do open mics when you're professionally working somewhere off in Vancouver? The truth is now, I am an open mic. Whoa, I mean, hold on. I hold on. on it's stage. not on right now. Those who are willing to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars <laughs> for, for Mr. Cornell to come out to your, 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 your bar mitzvahs to do this stuff. He's always doing the A material. He's always bringing the prime. That, I only, okay. I, no, I learned that during Simon Rockoff because when I said, so you can do some stuff tonight, I go, no, they've paid for a show tonight. Tonight is not the night. I, I have that attitude with two people. I have that right, attitude right. with five people. Right, I have that attitude with 8,000 okay. people. Okay, but what you're saying is you're, it's a growing. Your, your, your bits, because they're a story, are constantly growing. I am so open when I'm on stage okay. that the best of me as a communicator, which in this case, trying to be funny, okay. comes out on stage. I write better on stage when I'm having fun. Right. So we establish that place with the A material, and then we have fun. Right. And you know what's funny is so many people say, oh, you know, you could tell he made it up on spot. And you know as a comic that many comics make it look that way. Right. I literally do make this up on the spot. Right. And it's because, and I'm going to, this is going to sound braggish, and I, I, I will say so many things about other comics in such a giving way, and even in a critical way, as long as it's a giving way. Right. But when I talk about myself, good or bad, I feel weird. But right. I'm going to do it anyway. Good or bad? Or both? One of the reasons I can do a kid show, why yeah. I can do a senior show, why I can go do a corporate show that night and then do a stand-up comedy venue, Right. I feel the people in front of me. Right. And there's a freedom to that because I have the confidence as a performer, which I'm right. learning to put into my life. Well, that's good. Oh, tell me about it because I've always been the best me on stage. Right. And that's weird. That's not because no. That's I'm what everyone is on stage. I'm not the actor. No, you're on just, stage. no. It's you times ten is what Thank it you. is. Yeah, it's just an amplification of you. And that's when I go boom. Yeah. Well, that's when you get confidence tenfold. Now let's go back to that. Could you imagine thing. you're like that? You know, at, 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 at a meal with your your parents? That you'd be ridiculous. Oh, I'm not even remotely no, you can't, myself you can't with my be. parents. No, you can't be because that guy will try to rule the rule the roost. Yeah, and you can't rule the roost. Anyways, I'm better sorry. with family functions like that, just not talking. Well, that's just, oh, sorry, I just kicked the microphone. That's no good. That's, that's okay. That's well, no you good. get to places though. Sometimes you got to go a little backwards to move forward. Right. Well, we're talking family but, now, but I was really trying to get you on the road. Whole thing. Yeah, I don't want to talk family to be honest. Yeah, no, I want you to go um, onto the road, and then I want to talk about so your daughter for half a second. Saying I'm an open mic on stage is yeah. this, and this is where that love thing comes in, which I told you I'm weirdly reluctant to talk about, and then suddenly want to talk to you about it. Right. Uh, do you remember Mitch Hedberg? Of course. Yeah. We, we well, worked I, with him at Comedy exactly. Wood at Bathurst and Steels. I well, was there the night he got. Uh, he got, arrested? He got arrested yes, behind the bank, behind the, yeah. smoking, the, smoking the marijuana. Well, we had the downtown club, and I opened for him for that whole week. Right. He had and glaucoma, uh, though. He had glaucoma. I'm just throwing it out there. I didn't know that. 
Well, we had to be smoking the marijuana for some reason. Oh, yes, yes. It was definitely <laughs> his eyesight. That's what, his, that would explain the glasses. Or his back, man. But you, both, you and I both know how brilliant he was. I do, and he actually, when I came back from my, my little tour and came back from seeing him, I saw you, and your act had changed just a little bit. Yep. It was more heady. Yep. <laughs> can, I, can I say heady? Be... Well, that was partly his fault because he actually asked me to write one of his jokes, like write a joke like him and do it. So I actually wrote a Mitch joke and did it as Mitch. Right, because he's a character. He, he, actually, yeah. he was a character, and he yeah. still is a character. And, but his reasoning was this. And he taught me my first lesson. I taught me my next lesson. Okay. Now, you know that Mitch, um, yeah, I can't speak for Mitch. People know him way better than I do. Right. Even people in this city know him better. Right. Um, Your friends with Lynn, his, his well, wife. I knew Lynn. And, okay. And, um, I mean, certainly, I, I've heard some things she said. Um, she's very open with, yeah, with the Facebook. He's, she's yeah. very open with it. She's still making events that people, you know. Yep. No, and I, I applaud her for, for that. God or something. Because yep. it's what he said. He, can may I might just a sidestep. I don't know where we're going with this. But the art of stand-up comedy is the fine line of um, courage and the stupidity where as a philosopher is trying to explain the goodness in, in everything and the badness yep. in everything and then meet them in the middle. It was explained as if you built a story from all the way from uh, Nova Scotia and all the way from Vancouver and you met in the middle, it's the king of the golden spike from the railroad right. that gets the, uh, the spark flowing. That's the, this is how the comedy was explained to me back. So, if, so two ideas hitting and then finally seeing the connection, that's where the spark of uh, – See, <laughs> that's funny because we're talking about Mitch. Mitch and I never really talked about material. No, you, you talked because about I a, had a joke. I had material. And so no, but he, he, he wanted a material from yeah, you. Yeah, but we didn't even talk about comedy. What we talked about and what I learned from Mitch Hedberg yeah. um, was about performance. And I, was, I mentioned Lynn and the people who know him better than I yeah. ever did. Okay. Um, and that I believe he was terrified on stage, massive stage fright. That was part of the looking down, the hair in the eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we talked about... Um, I guess detaching yourself from the outcome of the joke. So his his thing that he explained to me, paraphrasing from years ago, right, right. was I'm not there for them. Right, right. No, and I don't care if they like me or not. And you would be well. You saw him. Long. He would be. He did yeah. 45 minutes and didn't have 45 minutes. Right. He would bomb consistently. Right. And people stayed because they knew something brilliant was going to no, happen. No, that's what was. They that never was, yeah. left. Yeah. You're God, at one time he lied down on stage. Facing away from the audience. Like, right. he didn't just lie down on stage. He faced the back of the stage. Right. He stayed there for 10 minutes. Right. Nobody left that room. It was no. brilliance. No. But here's the thing. Performance art. I'm kind of keep going out yeah. there. Performance art. I got this from him, and I learned to detach myself. So no yeah. longer did I go on stage caring about whether they liked me or not, and it changed everything. But it didn't change enough. Okay. What I would love, if Mitch and I sat down and had a conversation now, I would tell him this. Well, maybe in 50, 50 60 years you can have this. Let's uh, go with that. 50, yeah. 60 years. Yeah, Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I would say, look, I, I got that, and that changed my life. Right. Like, Mitch changed my life. Okay. And we were never great and close friends, but we had a week of really getting to talk. Yeah. And um, I got better because I would go on stage and not worry. But there was still, I still had that thing in my self that was bomb or not. And I never understood why most of them weren't bombing. But when I bombed with the same shit, I would, sorry, oh, see, there to, you my go. Daughter, so, sorry to my daughter yeah, you see, and your children. You see, all children out there need that. But you know what? That's CBC friendly. That Sadly, is, but. No, it is. It yeah. is. But see how we just stopped the conversation? We're going to talk yep. to your kids at home right now. Listen, you, that's a bad using word. these words doesn't make you look smarter. It does not. It makes you look dumber. It makes you look dumber. And because you can't even see us, we now have paint on our heads. I'm all red. Well, yep. Um, and I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, so I didn't understand what would happen when I would be on a stage with the same material and I would bomb right off the get-go. Right. It wouldn't happen often, but it hurt like crazy when it did. Right. Because the jokes are yours. You're so attached to your own material. They're like your babies. They're actually not liking your baby. But in the end, that's not why. But This that's, is what no, I have that's what figured had, that's out. What, that's what you had then, though. Yeah. Look at my babies that they don't like. Exactly. And now you're saying it's not my babies. It's... I didn't give them the gift of laughter. Now, people will not buy this. A lot of comics certainly wouldn't. I would suggest that if you're going to a comedy club and the, and the person on stage doesn't make you laugh, they had failed in the job at hand of making... If, if, yeah. I, paid, if I paid a ticket and it's like, oh, I'm going to go to laugh, I didn't laugh, 
that wasn't good. But see, I'll, if I did something now and they didn't laugh, I wouldn't think I failed because I now know that you can't make everybody laugh all the time. Corporate is a great example of that. Nope, if the like president's that. not laughing, nobody's no going laughing. to. Right. Um, but now I know this. When I go on a stage, I don't care if they like me or not. So I got and no, kept no, liking that from you Mitch. or liking your material. You know what I mean? Exactly. No, no, on stage, it's sure. the same thing. No, but, no, but if you walk off the stage saying they didn't like me, not my material. Yeah. I mean, no separation. That'd be a depressing day. Yeah, after 20 years of doing this, if you, you have haven't a separation. gotten past right. that, you're no, no. in trouble. Did you hear that? No. See, that's this is why we're doing this. Yeah. So do you understand that, folks out there? If your material is your material, yeah, so it's your baby. So you work really hard on it. Separate yourself from that because oh, yeah. you are not the written world word. You yourself added something to that one time you performed it where everyone stood up and started applauding, and you can't remember what it was because you didn't write it. You didn't record it. I got to give you a story then. Oh. Oh, here we are. This was in a tent. It was a private party. It was for the husband. The wife hired me. I was well paid, um, and there's a responsibility to that. Right, yeah. However, I get there. There are children in front of me. Now, remember, I am a stand-up. I, I will use the F word selectively. Yeah, he, he likes to say Fufanugan yes. as often as Fufanugan. possible. Fufanugan. I use an adult word that has a power for a certain joke at a certain time, yeah. and people will still say, you were clean. Yeah. So that I'm okay with that. Right, because he used the word Fufanugan in the proper text of when Fufanugan Thank needed you. to be Fufanugan. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of Fufanugan. She knew this going in. Oh, I'm yeah. very open. Yeah. They bring kids right in front of me. Okay, I, I can deal with this. I can take Fufanugan out. Yeah, Fufanugan doesn't need to be there. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, but it really does limit, limit certain jokes and certain brain... Quality of the joke as it reaches them. Well, that joke, most jokes, because you just said as a, as a sculptor of joke, you actually have to remove certain joke yeah. because the punchline is utilizing Fufanugan for what Fufanugan needs yeah. to be used. Yeah, so that's... those jokes. No actually, magic word. Those jo jokes have to be actually, in my world, need to be removed because I don't have a hard enough F, uh, Fufanugan to replace Fufanugan. See... <laughs> I can do the jokes without, and I change the tone. Oh. But it's not the same, the same joke. No, it's Fufanugan. Um, I, I, <laughs> if I, it's funny. If I take that word out, the joke becomes um, a question almost. Huh? <laughs> As opposed to, Arr! Right. And it's oh. funny. It becomes a step back. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe that's so. As opposed to, <laughs> this is insane. Right. Uh, but anyway, so I'm yeah. doing this thing. Nobody's sitting down. I'm in a tent. Yeah. They're drinking, but that's okay. But here's the thing. This is a party of people who hadn't seen each other in a long time, and nobody wanted to hear me. And they're talking to each other about grade three. Remember in grade three when the kids were drinking? I started, <laughs> I started with a story that, had I had their attention, would have worked. And it was a story, not a joke. Funny story. No, that's how you go. That's why we're always Private following. Private party. Yeah, we're following you down. And I wasn't going to get them. Oh, no. No. The lady actually came up and gave me the old yank, yank. Oh, look. no. How many no, no, minutes no. in? How uh, many minutes not in? very far in. Oh, no. And, um... You know what I did? And this is how I'm different now. Okay. I looked at everyone and I said, listen, guys, my only regret is that we had a chance here to laugh for half an hour and I wasn't able to give that to you. But I know that you're already having an okay time and I'm great with that. You haven't seen each other in a long time. This is a weird situation. You can't see me from the front row because you're all standing. I said, you know, I don't feel bad. I said this to them. I said, I actually feel really good that you still seem happy. I only wish that I could have given you some laughter tonight because that's healthy. Right. I got an applause break from all of them. Right. And I went home. And you got paid. And I got paid. Saying that, okay, folks at home, again, getting paid. Getting paid. Getting paid. It's yeah. important. And it's important that you can accept that money, which I had to learn a long time. Oh, yeah. Because the things I'm doing right now, I'm doing, I'm not getting paid. I'm loving this. I'm right. loving talking to an old friend chatting. I'm hoping what he's telling some, some me, I'm going to re-listen and, and learn something new. Because, again, I'm listening and doing at the same time, part of my ailment. And we're going to get something, we're going to glean something from what we're doing here. And at this point, um, I don't even think I gave him a proper setup because we, we jumped right into uh, why he's here at the Opera House doing his charity. As I don't even know if you mentioned my name. No, I did. Of course, Dave Cornell Jeff. I definitely Dave Cornell Jeff. But what I didn't say was, is the fun story of, of the big city improv where um, uh, the, the guy on the microphone here, Adam Powell, he thought for a second that um, he's, he was asked out to, to perform at Yuck Yucks. Uh, I have a, a friend in, in the business uh, at the Yuck Yucks place that he said you should come out. And I said, I have no interest at all to do stand-up comedy. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a th thespian. I'm a, I'm a singer-songwriter. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a guitar player. I, I'm, I'm not a musician, but I'm, I'm, I'm these things. He says, you're really funny. I said, I'm, I don't know. And my jokes, because my idea of humor always came from the concept of um, 
vaudeville, which is another thing that this place started, the Opera House. We were just told 1905, 1908, this is a vaudeville, and then it turned into a Chinese porn theater. And oh, that, I didn't hear that part. Oh, yeah, well, you have to listen. And, and uh, pornography, you know, it's, um, a, uh, it's painting. And uh, <laughs> if I can't lie to you, straight to your face. Exactly. <laughs> it's theater of the mind. Theater of the mind. Okay, kids, we'll explain that in 10 years. Yeah, don't mind me. So, uh, so big city improv is where I uh, I was told that uh, if you brought some friends in, you can get on the stage. It wasn't. No, I didn't even have that prerequisite. No, no, no. You was, never had to bring friends. No, you it just had to do with. No, if you did, you got on the stage without an audition. Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah, you bring people. Yeah. You're on your. No, that's. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's that, that's how it was. Big city improv. I was like, hi. And well, if you bring five people, I, I don't even need to audition you. It's nice yeah. to have an audience. At this point, I'm not really sure what we're doing. I show up. I have three props in my pockets. And I'm a singer, so I... A I, little wooden thing that had your name. That's right, and the other one said schmuck. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, right. And so I'll, I, afterwards, you told me that you might not want to use props. And if you are going to use props, recognize yeah. that that's a different genre of comedy. And it was only at that moment where it was defined, because you were trying your dangdest to become a crafted stand-up comic, as well yes. as a fluent, um, uh, open-minded a host like there's a two different jobs they are and i'm bad at hosting still. and producer sorry and and I think, I think i caught you right when and this is the story i wanted to tell because the guy who's running big city improv has a name that's uh, that's that sounds very similar to another person who became very popular in toronto for the killings of uh, of several uh, yes. small children and women that were paul left bernardo out. right so the guy who runs big city improv is named paul bernardo and after all this comes to light he can't seem to put bums in the seats. People do not want to work with him anymore. And he leaves. I actually don't know him in the city of Toronto anymore. I believe no. he up and left. My joke was that he changed his name to Paul Teal. Oh! <laughs> oh! And sing and a miss. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> he was, he, he was going to go with Mike Tyson. And then after that, Gian Gameshi. It just all was going bad for him. Yeah, he, he just, just kept, couldn't win. He just kept choosing bad names. That Bundy name was good. <laughs> no? <laughs> you know, he actually thought he was choosing the name from the TV show. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. F funny for us, not for him. No. So uh, that's where we met, and yeah. you put me on stage for the first time ever as the conceptual stand-up comedian. And it was at that moment yeah. where I knew, because you were telling me what a stand-up comedian was, that I, I'm not. That, that this is not what but I funny am. Funny enough, do you know that is the, there are only two times in my life where I have, and this wasn't quite a la Yuck Yucks, where they would purposefully slam the amateurs. No, there was but no. there were two times in my life that I said something snarky about an amateur and what I said to you when you got off stage was because you had a little tape recorder right. and I don't know if you remember this but I said probably have it still recorded oh that's funny I said you know the good thing about recording your show is you can erase it <laughs> and you laughed and your friends laughed and I liked you yeah well you gotta, you gotta be able to take the joke to give it and even though my problem is I'm basically now people told me from the beginning you know how Bob Saget you are and I thought Family Tie, not Family Full House Bob Saget, never saw his stand-up comedian. Stand when I saw his stand-up, and then I saw him as a person, yep. now I understood it. He is the king, or wants to be the king, of one-upmanship. Whatever comes out of your mouth, I'm going to I'm gonna just yep. jump up to the third level and, and start spitting on your head with Crazyville. And he's the king of that. Um, I would love to see myself in a room with Bob Saget now. Bob, if you ever listen to this and someone says, yeah, Bob, he said he'd go toe-to-toe. Bob Saget is the only person that I'd be willing because he's the guy who Cleese will always keep me in the same vein to see if we how obscene, insane an idea could get. Not dirty, not not non, not not conventional, but just outside of itself because it's just you know, it's that one could up either it. be brilliant or fall apart. Right, right. But it's, it's it, it will become at some point he has a, hum, a hundred quadrillion a million dollars and at some point he's, he'll have to end up falling back on that. Like unless I'm as successful as he is when we do this. Yeah. That's I, that's the only place of failing that he can come back to. It might be fun for him though. Yeah, maybe. And, and there you go. This. There you go, Bob. I'm going to send you out something so I can make fun of it from a distance from afar. Okay, you know what's neat? A uh, little throw out to you and me. Uh, Big City Improv was the first, uh, I believe, it certainly was at the time, um, non-Yuck Yucks or Lap Resort room in the city. Is that right? I believe so. That's weird, right? Yeah, there were no, there was really no system of open mic. I did Pro-Am that night. Um, so I'm relatively proud of that. 
And you started Spirits, which Joanna Downey then turned into a uh, Toronto Phenom. Yeah. I don't think people remember that Spirits was your room. No, they remember. No, oh, they, they, no, they know, but they don't count down of how long the room's been open. They count down how long uh, Joanna Downey's run the room, which I'm... Give her that credit. No, what are you talking Phenomenal. about? She now, Simon Rakoff is, yeah. is, 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 is doing such a great job there. Now, it's funny. I don't go there. Simon? No, um, it's uh, Kyle Post. Oh, I thought Simon was doing it. He keeps no, he posting does it. hosting. Of course. Well, he hosts oh, okay. and he does, but he's not the the man who I would say if you ever wanted to get on the stage or mm -hmm. be a part of that stage would be Cal Post, C A L P O S T, and uh, he's uh he's he's uh I've never seen him do clean. I would love I would love to see Cal Post do clean. I would. No, just I know the name. It. We're Facebook friends. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, uh, I would love to get him on this show. I want to get him on yeah. this show for traveling as well for on the road. I would love to have him out here uh, talking about spirits and such. Spirits is interesting. It, I respect the community that goes to spirits of comics and such. Have you heard Prop and Mike? Have you heard Prop and Mike? I've never heard Prop and Mike. Yeah, it's an open mic for pros oh, only. For pros only. I've never. I just heard about Probe it. Probe and Mike. Probe and Mike. And I said, "That's genius." That is genius. That means every because I was trying to make sure the amateur was kind of swiped out of there. So I had it. You you were calling. Everyone was calling it pro am, and I was calling it. I believe spirits was up and coming. Yeah. I was. Ne there was never amateur anything. You decided to get on that stage. You're ahead of everyone who else is in the audience, and yep. I'm giving you that. And if you've been in the business doing, and I, at the time they told me seven years. If you're in the business seven years, you can't count any of that time. You have to be in the business ten years. And I'm well, like, now you have to go to Humber College. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's only funny if you've been to Hummer College. Uh, but if it J worked for Jason Rouse, I mean, if it didn't work for anybody, I would be laughing. As, but Jason Rouse would, would, would say that because he broke down his act and he knows his act and he was taught how to do his act and how to create proper writing, he is now a phenom. Interesting, because Jason was always an incredibly smart writer. Right. Well, um, like or not like the material he right, does the material. which i do actually because no, like i know comedy yeah you gotta know that material um, is great because it has to come from someone like him though you can't yeah. put on overalls and start telling those jokes you know it was interesting uh, pre-humber when jason and i would meet we would have great conversations and then he would interact as jason with his buddies and that was jason still right but that's not the side of jason that i would connect with right. i would connect with the writer the thinker the philosopher like right. you would say yeah and um i'm not surprised to hear that that's his response to humber because if you go into humber yeah with that ability to break yourself down and you're already really good yeah of course you're going to improve no. but he could have done the same improving over 10 years of doing it he could have done no it's, it's not the see the doing it would you be learning how to do it for yourself versus how it gets done and then Got you can it. so yeah. when i saw his jokes written out word for word in a duotang it was like you know <laughs> to look at you and to hear you yeah. that makes me feel that you are head and toes above uh, heel above most people that are doing this he Man, took next it, he time took i see it, him i'm going to talk to him about he that he took it ridiculously uh, yeah. seriously oh yeah oh no um like you can is, watch jason <laughs> on stage and yeah. never understand yeah. the thought yeah behind yeah. what yeah. he was producing. But I never met him as the philosopher. I met him always as, um, we were always going toe-to-toe, because -to -toe, when he came to the room, it was about who can blow up the room the best, because we all had our funny jokes, and we can all be very, very funny for five minutes. Yeah. And he could clearly r run a room, change the temperature of the room. I became a guitar act and a singer-songwriter is what I am, so when I went up, I just sang retarded songs or things that were outside of themselves songs, and I controlled the room for as long as, you know, you have to follow a guy who's just singing. So we all had our, our strengths. That's interesting. So if you had your strength, then you can just keep it. So um, I'm happy when I see somebody doing well. Simon Rakoff, another name we were just talking about. Yeah. a great year. Yeah. When people do well in this industry, yeah. it means there's room to do well in this industry. Right. Now, I may call myself non-industry per se, but that doesn't mean I don't want to do well when I get that thing that makes me go pop. Problem is, and this is where I hit a wall in Los Angeles, when I lived in L.A., everybody was trying to do other people's stuff. Right. And there was no room for me to do my stuff. So why do I have to live in L.A. to do my stuff? I could do that here with people that I feel more akin to. And I came home. And people were mad at me when I came home. They're like, what no. the hell did you come home yeah, from L.A. Exactly. for? A lot of people were mad. Well, I understand because there's, there's one, one thing you've, you've basically said to yourself without using any words. Because when you go to L.A., you're actually putting yourself in a position to say you're a commodity and an asset. Yep. And as long as it takes me, because working Toronto is basically working that friendly stage that doesn't say go, go, go blow it at your bum even though you know, it feels like that some nights. Yep. But when you go to L.A. and you have you know, the – 
Those rooms are the rooms that let you know you're going to make it or break it in the idea. But I was making it. That's well, the weird then, thing. Then, I was killing those rooms. And well, then, so yeah, then, here's then the thing. I'm angry at you too. Then didn't you? Then you? You just didn't listen. I did not know that. But if if I did know that, you, then you shouldn't have stopped because you can't make it. There's only 30 million people in Canada. Not if everyone gave you a penny, you can't make a living. Now here's the All point. Right. A, I do make a living. No, I'm, I'm talking but about. But what I'm saying is. I have other pursuits that aren't just stand up, like my cartoon strip. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. I you, have, had, you had a whole book there. I, yeah, I well, swear I read a book. I'm all over it this year. I, I want book. badly. I saw a calendar. Cartoon. Yeah, I saw a, a calendar yeah. one year, and then I saw. Um, yeah, and I have a, book. a single panel, and I will say that it is. Is that, on, is that out there on the online? Can you? Yeah, get yeah, that? you can. You can. It, there's about nine that I have on a blog, which I should know the name of off the top of my but head, you but don't. I don't. But, you, so, uh, but so if send you do badly link. drawn cartoon images, you'll find one of mine. Badly drawn cartoon images. Yeah, on Google, and you'll find one of mine. As a matter of fact, I get more hits on that than anything, so I really have to follow that up. Okay, it's very farsightish. Okay. Um, I'm willing to admit that, but it's not a ripoff of far. No, side. not even a little. And there are many. But there are there are but talking the point animals. Is, when I was in L.A., and I'm not saying I was screaming up in the comedy storm or anything. Right. I was just doing well. I did one room, and then I got colleges, and I got all these things. That's working. And they were going really well. Okay. And I came home. And I came home for a couple of reasons. The okay. job I had there ran out. I went down as a writer. Right. And the company just wasn't getting where they needed to go. Right. Um, great guy ran the company, but it just was it was hurting. And I tried to do it from Toronto, but it doesn't didn't work. Um, but I had a girl here who became the mother of my daughter. Right. But it wasn't that. All those are reasons I used to come home. Right. Here's what I found out in L.A. And sadly, it took me a lot longer to figure out what this meant to me. Okay. What I found out in L.A. was... I'm up making people laugh with my jokes. And when I become successful, I don't get to do this anymore. I do somebody else's jokes in some sitcom or whatever it becomes, right? right? And you could put the truth of it. There was a lot of fear behind success for me. But in the end, it wasn't what I wanted. Like you going on stand-up comedy stages, but you were still a performer. Right. Me, though I am a stand up. But I never went to a. Like, I don't. I, the second that uh, Mark Breslin changed the circle sign, he used mm -hmm. to say Comedy Emporium. Mm -hmm. And before that, it was improv and stand up comedy. Now it is just the greatest stand up comedy. Mm -hmm. And ever since they changed that sign, I have not been on a, on a, on a yet. No, and stage. that's their choice, and I get that. But yeah. it's. It, it, it sort of shut down because. But does Steve Schuster get to? That's my question. Exactly. We, we've, we've created stand up as an entity unto itself, which is. A shame because I now believe in laughter and I do it through stand up. Right. What I was saying earlier about doing my senior show, it's right. a comedy magic show. I do stand up and then the tricks all have jokes, they laugh, and that's what counts. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to then you, and so to wrap all this up. Uh, I don't like, want to wrap up, I want to keep talking. Oh, that's awesome. I'm happy that you want to keep talking. Uh, so I just want to make sure that because uh, you do have a daughter, nine years old. And yeah, let's she, talk about and, that. And, uh, and, and, See, that'll and, bring us back to love, too. Yeah, I told you I didn't want sure to love. talk about this, and now I'm not done talking about it. Yeah, it's not fun, so I have to cut you off. I know. But I wanted to, because uh, one of the parts of this uh, show is that my kids, I, I, if this was during the weekend, if we could have pulled that off, I would have brought my kids, and they would have asked you questions Oh, personally. that would have been awesome. Uh, it it would have been, been more like you would have not said the S word, probably, because they would be right here in front of you. I would have seen them, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it would totally, totally would have helped us. And I, I was going into some places to smoke medicinal marijuana and my wife said i'm not allowed to bring the kids there even though the owner said i'm allowed to bring kids there and there'd be another room yeah. for for, yeah. for smoking so they, i could bring my kids so they could share what it's a it was a family friendly yeah. environment but i digress and that was with uh, joey uh, joey puff mama uh she at the uh, comedy room over the uh, comedy underground yeah yeah she's still going she has a room that's up and running so uh, oh. we, should, we should probably give her a call i should do some of these rooms yes well you should I, like do I something said, I there respect them i respect the guys right. who, and girls who go to spirits i respect yeah. the people doing them yeah um, and sometimes I crave the company of other comics. Yeah, but God, I'm so busy. I have a daughter. That's great. I have That's fantastic. My production company. I do jokes. And there's the thing is, I'm not hurting for stage time because, right. like I said, I'll go up and do my one man show, right. and I still get to play with material. You're right. See, the, see, the most people don't get that little charm uh, thing you mentioned I'm about lucky. the one. Yeah, the one stage, the one man so show lucky. shouldn't happen. So that's fantastic. So, um, so I'm gonna go through. Um, so kids questions. Yeah, kids questions. So you, you, you got the daughter. Does she, does she live with you? Uh, I have her half time. She's okay. got a great mom. Great. Um, so she lives with her half the time. Right. So traveling, she'll, she'll then live with her mom when you have to up and run anywhere well, in no, Canada. No, I don't. Um, She's I don't nine. Travel she, as much as I used to. Right. Uh, I try to keep it closer to home, and I have five days 
off, two days on, two days off, five days off. So it's a confusing thing. I always have her Mondays you're, and you're, Tuesdays. You're almost a fireman until you weren't a fireman yeah, anymore. Yeah, I never have her Wednesdays and Thursdays, right. and I have her alternating Friday through Wednesday morning. The point is, <laughs> I book when I don't have her. Right. And if a show comes up that's like a senior show or whatever, she can come with me. She's tired of that. But, has you she? Know. So she, oh, has, yeah. she has come to your, your, your junior, my, junior senior show? my stand-up magic show. And what's her feedback? She loves it. Oh. It's still to this day. Oh, that's awesome. She's actually added things to it. See, I only have boys. I have three boys, so people tell me I'll never truly be loved by a woman because I don't have any daughters. Uh, the only people that know that will be truly loved by a girl is if they had a daughter. At least that's what was thrown to me. So my wife <laughs> likes me, my wa- my mom likes me, but the truly love thing, I don't know if I'm there or not. Well, I got the love. That's awesome. So congratulations. Oh. Congratulations on that. I don't know <laughs> if I knew you had a daughter. I mean, I think you yeah. may have mentioned in passing, but it wasn't, I have a daughter born today. You don't see her on Facebook. Right, I don't right, talk about right, her. Right. Um, yeah. and she and, is a separate part of my life right. in a way. Yeah. Um, she's never come to a stand-up show. No, how can she? She, she can't get in. She can't get exactly. in. Exactly. Unless she you're Tommy Chong, you can't bring the kids. She, you know, the thing is, I tell her, it's not about you not understanding a joke. She's got an incredible, not sense of humor so much as intellect, sense yeah. of timing. Oh, she can oh, tell. She, she can, can tell, tell it. Tell a oh. timed joke. Oh, that's nice to hear. Her head. Oh, she's she's very smart. She, and in that case, she'll never be the class clown because she's already um, right a, beyond that. Right. She's not reaching out for attention. She just knows when it's funny. Okay. And uh, it's, it's a strength. It's a strength. So I want to hear the questions. Okay. So, the questions. So, the, so the first question, so I have three boys, like I had said. I have three of them. It's because uh, I'm, I want to feel very trailer park about my life. And I, I planned two. And then, so I didn't, I didn't want to have a, a center child. I was hoping they, they would hear a progression. So I got the oldest, the second oldest, and the third oldest is what I have. So uh, <laughs> uh, the first oldest, uh, he has his own concept of a show. So after he hears the interview take place, he then would, would sum up and then ask his question. So uh, oh. my first, que- my first uh, son's question, or my eldest the son question would be, <clears throat> so you've, uh, you've don't, you do close-up mag- magic for, for the young and the old. You are also a stand-up comedian. You've been on um, a cl- lot, Club 54. You've done television. Yeah, I've done television. You've done television. You've toured all of Canada. You have a comic strip that you're now working on progressively, and mm-hmm. you're still working with it. You do charity work as well as perform for charity work. As much as I can. And, and you have a family that you keep yourself active for. What up? <laughs> but, you know, the question answered the question. That is what up. You pretty much nailed me. You got me right there. What up is uh, there are days when it seems like it's never going to happen. And I don't mean success. I just mean the joy of the journey which is success, and then there are days when I rearrange myself, and these are more often than not. Again, I'm I'm so incredibly lucky. Like, it's it's no, I I was going to say the S word. Um, What up is, I'm 47 years old, and I'm figuring it out, and how many people don't? I'm 47 years old, and I have figured out that you take all of the weirdness out of the world love that we have put on that word and you start living your life from that perspective which is not as altruistic as it seems this isn't froofy that if you go with man i'm doing this because it's good because it's fun and it brings me joy and i spread joy let's go with that then we could use the word joy it doesn't even have to be the l word um man every day is a success and that's what up Those are the days I strive for, and I strive not to have them one day and not the next. I strive to have them all days. And then, you know, when I'm in those days, man, I have so much to give, and I get so much back. That's what up. That's a good answer for what up. Uh, What I like is I – not that I wrote that for my son, but the the joke, of course, is basically semi-stolen from Chris Farley where – you remember that time in that movie that you did that thing? That was awesome. (laughs) <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, so he's not here to tell that joke anymore, no, and I thought it'd be fun for my son to basically do a moment of, yeah, there is no question. You've answered the yeah. question. And then most people, because they're creative, in this, the people who I'm interviewing, answer a question. They find the question, or they'll even say, That's a good question. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's coming from a 10 year old who's critiquing the 10 year old. 
uh, well, stand-up comedians mostly, <laughs> I would say for sure. So now I have my, my, my uh, not my second, but the, the, the second oldest yep. son, and he has two questions for you. The first question is, what's your favorite thing to do? This. Talk. You like chatting. I don't want to say it that way. No, that's what I'm doing now. This yeah. is what, what we're doing is chatting. There shouldn't be any type of, you shouldn't feel any stress from me. You shouldn't feel anything no, pushing no, you left or right. This it, should be open chat, right? This is what it's supposed to be. I'm not going to say talk. Okay. You would think that to know me, and yet most people don't realize how much time I spend by myself. Traveling, getting to where you need to go, prepping for a home. show, writing for a show, laundry. Being at home, writing. Yeah, laundry takes laundry, me dishes. seven and a half hours, laundry. Yeah. It's a whole um, day. I got three kids. We're going, I'm going to go back to the same theme I answered the last one. Okay. What up? Um, <laughs> What's your best, favorite thing to do? What the up? The best days are when I'm expressing myself, even if it's only to myself. My favorite thing to do is express myself from the inside out in all ways at all times. I know I'm getting very philosophical no, you're to. with your kids' questions. Yeah, that's okay. But isn't that apropos for kids' questions? I'm sure they'll look straight through and go, and then his next question is, what's your favorite thing to eat? Chicken wings, although right now it's chicken wing tips. Oh, man. You put on paprika, garlic powder, coriander powder, and seasoning salt. You put it in the microwave, just the tips. Um, for longer than most people would, they come out crispy, and you're just eating chicken fat. I don't know what a tip is. Uh, it's, uh, you know, when you get split wings, they never have that. That It's the section that goes right out to the very end of the wing. You know, bend, bend, looks like an arm, and then, beep, goes in the opposite direction. There's that little Those taper piece. You don't, no one eats oh, that. Oh, hell no. That's, uh, I shouldn't tell people because people are going to find it because I like Find chicken wings it. before well, the they were. No, no, no. I Chicken wings were my thing, and then all of a sudden they were $40 a pound because right. everyone else discovered them. Thank you, Buffalo. Right. Seriously, Buffalo, I think you it's know what? Have a snowstorm. You don't need to do that. <laughs> Yeah, that was a crazy snowstorm. That was. That was nuts. That was. That was you know what? That was retaliation for making my wings cost $40 a pound. Funny. So anyway, so I discovered wing tips. Wing tips. And, you know, you can't eat these with other people because you got to gnaw away at them. You do. I don't even you, know. How do you eat them? Like, do you eat the bone inside there? Uh, if it's it, the way I cook it, they cook enough that you can actually chomp through the bone. Wow. Yeah. I don't, I don't Not the I've whole ever... bone. No, not the big bone, but yeah. the little bone. See, I, I'll eat the breading off of them because when you get like jardu wings from yeah, Chinatown or exactly. something, I'll eat that. But you're telling you can nang, 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 nang. Nang, 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 nang. Wow. That is exactly what it's like. I, nang, 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 nang. And yeah. and I will do this by myself. Yeah. And um, it's pure joy. I think I'm stealing this, this punchline from someone, but I don't think I care. It's like those wings are from Nom Nom Nom. Ah, that's funny. From I've Viet never heard that. From, from Vietnam Nom Nom. Vietnam Nom Nom. <laughs> I just found out that yeah, it's fa. It's chick. not pho. It's not pho. It's fa. Fa. Yeah, so uh, everyone calls fa. it pho when you see the Vietnamese restaurants. Pho. World famous pho. It's not. It's world famous pho. I just did the accent. You know why, though? <laughs> I don't because even know who you're talking guy, to. My favorite guy, I've got two stores I go to. Um, right. one, one is run by a Chinese couple who actually helped me get my apartment years ago, and the other one is a Vietnamese friend of mine. Right. No, and no, no. Um, and, and I, when I talk to him extendedly, I do find myself falling into his accent. Well, can you, no Canadians do that. Yeah, we. Yeah, we so I just did his three, accent. Yeah. I wasn't being derogatory, no, I don't, but I was I actually having a conversation with him this morning. Uh, um, but wow. it's fa. Anyway, let's move on to the other question. <laughs> it's fa nafo. Yes. Uh, so my uh, my third oldest, <laughs> my third oldest, uh, he has he has several questions. Uh, his first question would be, "What's your favorite number?" Oh, easy, sixteen. I'm, I'm glad it was easy. Like these are, they shouldn't be thought provoking. Yeah, it's questions. been my favorite number since I was seven years old. We moved One to Ottawa. Six. It seemed like it was going to be a good thing. We had a red door. We were in sixteen. Red's my favorite color. Sixteen's my favorite number. And then the next question, of course, is what's your favorite color? Red. I, well, it's a kind of a given now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And then right uh, there in the door, I had uh, no choice. Right. I like that six. I'm a numerologist. I'm not. I am not an actual numerology, but n numbers motivate me. If there was a pathway that said 18 and a pathway that said 7, I would take the pathway that said 18. Like would, yeah, no, I would, get that. It would change my direction in life. My wife, when I went to go visit her family, I took number 8 to number 8 to number 8 to number 8 to her house at something 08, and I went, okay, we're getting married. Yeah. No, <laughs> so I, we've been I, married 13 years now. I've known her for 16. I have three children with her. Thank you, number 8. Number 8 is a good number. Wheat. Number 8 is brown yeah. or black, depending. Okay. I found I have something I never knew. I didn't even know it was a name, and I can't remember the name because I'm also dyslexic, which apparently many, uh, most people who have this are also dyslexic. Right. I see things in colors. In colors? Yeah, like I, I associate colors with words uh, and people, with names, with numbers, with letters. It's like a mnemonic device. Yeah. And but I, you um, actually see it. Like you actually yeah, use you've, it. you've been blue your entire, the entire time I've known you. 
more often I'm a, a dark blue. I'm a blue person. Yeah. I like um, some blue. All numbers have colors. All numbers All letters have, have colors. For oh. me. Anyway, hey, it's just an interesting no, no, thing. I, I never knew I had that this. before. I was, there, it I starts with a D. Enough. There's a name for it, yeah, but yeah. I have it. Yeah, I'll and look it up and I'll. Yeah, and I didn't. Because there is going to be a pre thing to this thing to make oh, cool. it happen. Then you can so tell people I'm a defacepata. Yeah, yeah, maybe I can do that. And then I am at pertameter. I, uh, no, that's still not it. No, that's no. That was from the. Um, I know. I'm just saying. I've it was two a flashback that I to the uh, shit uh, that I I don't know. I don't know words beyond four syllables. Okay, fair enough. And then uh, so uh, iamic pentameter. Right. Thank you. So then my son would ask how old are you, but I know 47. 47. Because I listened. Yeah. To the thing. And then, well done in the moment. Yeah. I, actually, I am getting better. Pops and props. No, I am getting better because of this. Actually. Yeah. No uh, doubt. Yeah, it's happened. Uh, the one that didn't record, I can actually remember everything to do with that interview. Because I was in panic mode, and then I, I went yeah. into everything's now long check? term. We did you check? Yeah, yeah, it's Excellent, because yeah, I right. want to hear this desperately. Yeah, I'll put it online for you on Friday, and you can listen to this on there. Nice. Perfect. Uh, so, got that one, and then actually, what's your favorite song? Favorite music? Mm. Can't be quantified. No, and, um, and, and you know what? You are the you, you are like everybody. There has not been one person. It's either the moment that you're in, uh, years, it depends on what's going on around me, and yeah. then... So I like AWOL Nation sale right now. I that's like that's what people have been doing. They tell me exactly yeah. what they're in the moment. So um, AWOL. Like, I like. I think it's called Husky or something. Um, take me to the church. Take me to church. Da 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 da. da. Um, but his close-up magic is awesome. So he yeah. doesn't normally sing through. I like show. David Bowie. I like Pink Floyd. Yeah. I can groove them. Fleetwood Mac. Um, I just downloaded. Troopers, two for the show. Okay. Um, I almost like anything that uplifts me from a base underneath my heart. You like band, it sounds like. So yeah. Ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Like and it can either uplift me in a very charming way, like Budapest. That song is one I like right now. It's kind of gets me happy right from underneath the, the heart. the happy song? Does the happy song do anything for Don't you? Don't worry. No. That's no. Oh, no. The happy song? No. 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 It, 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 um, Maybe it, it's not, not about unhappy. pop. It's not about the style. When things become a cliche or a stereotype, I tend to tune them out, which is 99% of all music. And then something will hit me. Doesn't mean it's better than those other ones. Just it hits me. So it's right. always individual. It can be break down to a band. I'll like one song and they've had nine albums. Right. Yeah. Steve so. Miller band, the best album, greatest hits. Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> the best often album. they're not the greatest hits isn't, but with Steve Miller, you're right. No, I can't listen to the other albums, yeah, but his no, greatest totally hit right. I was like, wow, he, yeah. got, he really got it together on this greatest hits album. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> really, really. Yeah. You know, if I were a band, I think my yeah. first album would be called Greatest Hits yeah. because you know it's going to sell. The only problem that I'm having with these chats so far is that I'm, I'm advertising them to people saying that they're just, you know, life lessons, lessons learned. It's infotainment because I'm not very mm -hmm. stressy during these things, but because when they hear that you're going to be a comedian. They, they wanted me to be funny. They I want this to be funny. Funny, no. I know. And so the other two, like, I was waiting for it to be funny, and I'm like, I'm going to preface at the beginning of this that it wasn't it wasn't necessarily to be funny. It's supposed to be fun. There's no stress to the conversation. We, today. we chatted. We did. Yeah. And, and I like to thank you wholeheartedly. I like to thank the people at the Opera House being open to help us here. We're wrapping up. So here we are all at right. the stage to come out and support uh, Dave and all his endeavors. And uh, we we can talk again at another at, an, at another time pertaining to the other things that you're going to be involved in. Um, I don't know you to be an impressionist, but uh, I know you do uh, cartooning, so I, I can link to all these things on my website. So if people click to you, Fantastic. then they click all over the place. All right, well, thank you very much once again. Live from my bedroom on the road. And uh, <laughs> here we are, season three on its way. And thank you again for your all your time. Thank you. And thank everyone listening. Yeah, if, if you're listening. If you're listening. <laughs> but if you are, you've been thanked. Yeah. yeah See, the here's the worst part. Just a little <laughs> quick aside. Okay. We got to the end of the interview, right. and that funny energy has started to come out of right, me. Right, right, right. Now I'm feeling funny. Well, that's how it goes. But you can take it to your show because you have a show to go to. I have two today. Yeah, and so make those people laugh. I will do that. All right, that's your job. Because I love them. All right, later.